We wanted to talk about what are the main bowl takeaways from what we all... We were all in different places for this bowl season, yeah. doing different shows, had different points of view. Give me a bowl takeaway that stood out to you. Well, I think one of the biggest questions for me is we talk a lot about coaching heading into bowl games because you have more time yeah. to prepare. So this is kind of a way to show off what the coaches are able... how they're able to prepare for other coaches. So my question for you is what are the biggest takeaways of the Big Ten coaches and the jobs that they were able to do this bowl season? Yeah, and I think you immediately have to go to Ohio State, right? Because there's no way you talk about the preparation, what Urban Meyer has been able to do with, with weeks to prepare for teams, his bowl, uh, what he's been able to do there. And then you look at the way they played offensively, and it kind of leaves you scratching your head. Hence, we're seeing changes as far as trying to make this team better. And I think we'll continue to see him as the day moves forward because it, it, things didn't work out well for them offensively, obviously. And Urban's not one to just stay pat and say, oh, guys, we'll We'll be okay next year. No, he's going to dive in and figure out how to change it, and we've already seen some changes made. I think his quote after that was, this will not happen again. I think right? that was his indication that yeah. big well, changes are It was such a coming. shocker. I yeah. mean, I think a, a lot of people are like, well, this is probably a coin flip. I could see either team winning this game. <laughs> right. and then For not, not so to go that way. And, and I, listen, I know they got, at the end of the day, you look at the score, they got blown out. But I truly believe, and I took a lot of heat for this, defensively, they played well enough. At a point in that game, before it got out of hand, the defense was really playing pretty well. And had some big stops in the third quarter. Not to be able to get any momentum or anything, get anything going from an offensive standpoint really hurt. You know, one of the takeaways I had, I mentioned this to Jerry yesterday on this show, was I, I get that the league went 3-7, and, seven and and I wouldn't apologize for that or try to defend it, but I do think you need some perspective with that. You know, one of the frustrating things with college football is that not everybody's on a level playing field, right? It's true. Some leagues play nine conference games, some play eight. Some schedule weak, uh, or conference games, some schedule weak non-conferences, some schedule really hard non-conferences, so it's really hard to level it out. The SEC played four ranked teams in this entire bowl season. The Big Ten played eight. <laughs> Rank teams. Just the logistics behind it. It's harder to win games when you're playing better teams. And when there were four teams, which was a record in New Year's Six bowl games, that also means that your fifth best team will be playing in your third bowl slot. So with someone like Iowa, Florida, well, that's probably a mismatch. And it turned out to be that way on the field. Yeah, and I think, Jillian, you brought this up. Those other games, you look at the Michigan game, coin flip, right? You yeah. You think it could have gone the other way right. easily. Penn State. Right? Penn State easily the other way. But this is what happens when you find yourself in these top-tier bowl games or playoffs. You're going to be playing the team across from you is going to be an elite team as well, and you can't afford to make mistakes. Not even little mistakes will change the outcome of the game. So, but going off of that, that is the biggest argument is people looking at it and saying, well, the Big Ten's only won three bowl games. So then how do you defend that? I, to your point, you, you have the ranked teams that they played. Their opponents were tougher. But then you look at a conference like the ACC that just continues to climb the ranks, and all of a sudden it's no longer like, oh, you're playing an ACC team in the bowl game. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Here's a W. Yeah. Suddenly it's a huge challenge. Yeah, it's a great bowl season. And you they think did. About, Eight you, wins. And you think about the top half of it. Oof. You, yeah. you think about Florida State and obviously Clemson, what they've been able to do the last couple of years as far as being in this championship game. And the correlation is they're both doing a great job recruiting. Mm -hmm. And again, this year, they'll, they'll do the same thing. So not only are they doing a great job as, as coaches, but on the field, what's going on, but they're attracting a lot of this young talent that's out there that wants to be a part of elite programs. Was the offensive line across the league oh. a takeaway for you? <laughs> you? If you want to be an elite team, right, and, and Mike, that's what separates everything. When you talk about the elite teams and then the teams that are just, eh. When you look at this Ohio State-Clemson game, Ohio State's offensive line, they had some issues a little bit on the right side all year long. But remember, they were starting a true freshman all year at guard. Right. A, a first-time starter and left tackle in Jones. So, but they were still coming along. But you saw when they had to play against an elite defensive line, and I'm talking about the guys inside. You, everyone can get these pass rushers. They're great pass rushers outside. But the people that are hardest to find for all of these teams, including the Blue Bloods, the best of the best, is elite defensive tackles. And this Clemson team has them. Hmm. This Florida State team, they have them. You look at Alabama, they have them every year. Grown men, what I like to call them. 
But that's the difference. When you can have these great players, interior players on your team, it really affects the way your offensive line has to play. Because now all of a sudden that left tackle or that right tackle that may be used to having a tight end or having a guard help out, but that guard now needs to help on that nose tackle because he's an elite player. I think you brought this up. The biggest shocker when you're looking at the bowl games on the offensive line was Iowa because they, they won the award during the regular season. It's amazing. How do you go from the regular season yep. where, and, and I understand that you're not going up against the same opponents, but how do you have that big of a discrepancy once you get to the postseason? Yeah, the Joe Moore Award, which, you know, our own Jerry DiNardo is a part of, and, and listen, they study a lot of tape, mm -hmm. these guys that are on this committee. And I was actually shocked that, that Iowa was the team that they picked, of all of them, because Bethard had taken a bit of a beat. They had been able to run the ball and had some success, but it wasn't like they really controlled and dominated all year long. But clearly it was something that they saw. But at the end of the day, if you can't control that line of scrimmage, you're not going to win the big games. You, you just can't do it because you have to have the versatility, the athleticism up front to be able to help that guy behind you that's a good quarterback and a good running back to make things happen. Last takeaway I had was how fun it was to see some individual players explode. Troy Fumagalli has been a good player all year, but he had the game of his life in that bowl game. Justin Jackson was a star. Saquon Barkley is a preseason Heisman favorite right now. You know what's exciting about Jackson, right? It's, it's always been like it's kind of its own little Big Ten deal. Like people say, well, he's not that fast. Even when we're watching the game, well, he's really not that fast, right? It doesn't matter. He makes he guys miss. And he's going to be a tremendous player. I think he's got a chance to play on uh, Sundays. Yeah. Even though he doesn't have great speed, I think he has the, the football IQ to be able to do it and obviously the skills to do it. But as you mentioned, Barkley, mm. Mm. he is... He's something special. <laughs> he, he's it's just something. It, it has been fun. It's it really so has.